Hello, welcome to Quake Headquarters. I'm Mark Griffin, librarian, author, photographer, and co-creator of a zine called Quake, which has been running for 17 years. Quake started about 17 years ago uh, as a zine called Chainsaw Enema. Me and two other people who worked for a newspaper in Russellville were just really unhappy with what we were doing and so we started doing um it was just basically two pages front and back xerox copy from kinko's or we just wrote about anything we interviewed a homeless person in nashville at that time uh there was a kid who was shot in todd county over the confederate flag so we wrote about that and then we wrote about music uh just about anything that went through our mind but after a while um uh, the, the logo was getting, becoming too offensive for people because we had like an actual chainsaw going up someone's butt and no one would pick up our magazine so we decided to clean it up a little bit and started calling it Quake. And we did that in about 95 I believe. And originally another person was going to do it with me. I would handle kind of like the left wing type material and he would do the right wing. You know, that was the reason what the Quake was going to come from, you know, these differences of viewpoints. But he bailed out and so I just ended up doing this zine of uh, just things that interest me. You know, I've interviewed Gatewood Galbraith, uh, writers such as Terry Bisson, uh, historical things that I thought that need to be covered in the area, like of, um, uh, about Charlie Bowles, who's mentioned in the movie um, Halloween, did a story on Uncle Elvis, who's one of the big uh, letter writers in comic books. Quite a legend. And so I've just been doing that and doing poetry or just whatever I feel like doing. You know, every issue is something different. I've done like comic book type stuff, um, short stories, rants about anything, Try, my attempt to interview Dennis Kucinich, and, um, and my um, cousin ran a print shop for a while and he did all the printing for us and he put it on all these different paper and I really hated when he retired and sold the business because it never was the same after that. I even did a story about male rape. And uh, here's another short story I wrote, um, wrote in the form of a blog. And so I've just about, whatever interests me, I just do. Um, I don't really set a format of what I want Quake to be. It's just whatever interests me in the world at that moment. Basically, I just do Quake because it keeps me sane in the world. It's something that I want to do. It's something that I almost like need to do. It's like, um, you know, breathing. You know, I've got to be creative. And this is my outlet for it. You know, I, I, I don't do Quake to make money. I make money to do Quake. The hardest part, the worst part, has got to be uh, just finding time to do it. You know, when you have like a day job, people want you to do things, you know, for them. It's hard to just find time and just set it down and do it. For one thing, I also have way too many ideas going through my head. And so it's, it's hard to get them all down at one time. And so I've basically had to make sacrifices. Stories that I've wanted to do, I've had to change to make them accommodate all the Quake format, you know, doing four pages. Uh, you know, I've had like stories, ideas for novels that I end up like making them into like uh, almost like kind books just because, you know, it'll work out better that way. One of the most rewarding things about Quake is just uh, meeting all the different people. When Terry Bisson, when I did a story on him, he took me up to his home and I got to see, you know, where he lived in New York, saw his workspace and everything. And I did my story about Coleman Dow, the Kentucky writer. I met his niece and she's like, you know, we become very good friends of her. Same thing with Gatewood Galbraith. And, um, you know, meeting all the different artists who've done the covers for me or have taken over for me. Tapping into, like, really collective energy. That's another thing that keeps me going. You know, it's just knowing there are other people in the world just as strange as I am. Yeah. Just about anybody can like write four pages and copy them off of a copy machine, but the real trick is to like distribute it. Basically what I do is, you know, mail them out to friends or pass them out to friends, creative people that I know, hand them out, mail them out, drop them off at the Bell Court in Nashville or the Great Escape in Bowling Green. You know, it depends on the people, you know, some people love them, some people don't. Well, I just focus on the people who love them. One of the biggest surprises for me was a zine festival that I went to in Nashville last October. People just got excited, you know, that I did zines because I thought zines was a dying art, you know, especially with the computer and everything, web pages, everybody is do not doing zines anymore. Everybody's doing blogs. But no, people still want to do, you know, kind of like the old hard copy zine. And I've met some people from Louisville, you know, who do a zine. She, they got excited to know there is somebody out there who's doing all this. Uh, there's a guy in Nashville who lives also in Nashville and New York, and um, he, he was got excited about it too. Traded copies and talked about a few things. It's very great, you know, very inspiring meeting these people. You know, her doing something that you love that you didn't think that many people were doing, 
and so it was it was very inspiring for me. Some of the comments I've heard most from people is kind of like, you know, why are you doing this? I just ignore them. Pay attention to the people who think what I'm doing is really cool. There was one issue I'd done, it was basically a fiction story that kind of went on the subject about abortion. One person who read it didn't know I, I'd written it. It was at the Java House, back when Banjo Bill did his shows there. I just had to be overhearing them talking about it and says like, well, that was a waste of a good five minutes. But that same day, someone came in, picked up the issue, started reading it, and went and says like, you know, I wish I'd known about this sooner because I could have used it for my term paper. So it just depends on who you are, what you're going to think about Quake. From the mind of a 17-year-old veteran, anybody who wants to start a zine, uh, just basically just go do it. You know, whatever interests you, just pursue that. No matter what it is, if it's a subject that you're not interested in, why are you doing it? Uh, you know, a lot of people do music zines because they love music. You know, a lot of people do zines that are just comic books because they love doing comics. You know, basically a zine is anything and it can be anything. I met a girl who does things is nothing more than just a collage of pictures with random words thrown. There is no art form except for what you want it to be. Uh, that's all that things are.